Hey, new song, yeah, I'm Pastor Chen here. I hope you're having a, a wonderful Wednesday evening. Um, and so today I wanted to invite you to have a little discussion about a biblical topic that we all know and that we all might be um, have a good understanding of or some of us might not, but that topic is sanctification. Last week we talked about justification and this week we're going to be talking about sanctification. And I know it's a really big word um, and there's a lot that's been written about it. There's been a lot of um, pastors, a lot of theologians that have written so many books about it. There's thousands of thousands and thousands of resources about that word sanctification. But to put it simply for you guys and for myself too, um, I, re- I, like it, I like the simple definition, is that it's basically the process in which we become like Christ. And that is an important thing in, in our walk as Christians, in our walk as um, in our walk in being like Christ. Because, because in order for us to be like Christ, we have to become like Him, right? We have to start doing things like Him. We have to start looking like Him. We have to we have to start having the same attitude. And that process of sanctification is what takes us from point A of who we used to be to point B of who we are who we are now in Christ, our identity that we have in Christ. And this is something that Apostle Paul really understood and really wanted to get across to the people in the church of Rome. And so if you have your Bibles with me, if you would turn with me to Romans chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. Romans chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. And it says this, Don't you know that if you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of that one you obey? either of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But thank God that although you used to be slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that that pattern of teaching to which you were handed over. And having been set free from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. I am using a human analogy because of the weakness of your flesh. Now, Apostle Paul, when he writes this, chapter 6 of Romans, which, by the way, is one of my favorite books, is he's now in the part of his letter where he's talking about um, our sanctification. Um, In the beginning parts of Romans, he's talking about what it means for us to be justified, what it means for us to be actually saved. When we are um, standing before God and, and we have all these sins, what has Jesus Christ actually done to change our identity, to change our um the outcome of our verdict to to change um, whether we are justified to be guilty or justified to be free. So uh, Apostle Paul takes the beginning chapters of Romans to do that. And after he sets down this argument of us being justified by grace freely to be guiltless of our sin, he then now goes and talks about, okay, what does that mean for us in this life now? What does that actually mean for us in the real world as we are interacting with the people around us, as we are interacting with our parents or even ourselves or as we're interacting with God? What does it actually mean? And one of the questions that he he hypothetically poses himself is this. What then? Should we sin because we are now not under the law but under grace? He's he's anticipating that people ask that question. Okay, well, if we are justified by, um, by grace, freely by grace, does that mean that we can do whatever we want? Does that mean that we can um, continue to sin because we're saved anyways? And I'm sure many of you thought that too. But Apostle Paul's emphatic answer to that is, no, of course not. If that's how you're thinking about it, then you're missing the whole point of why Jesus saved us, of what it means for us to be sanctified. And so he goes on and talks about this whole idea of us being slaves to something, to be enslaved by something. And I just want to clarify um, when he's talking about the word slave, it's not talking about our, the, historically what we know about slavery, especially in America, um, the huge um, history of, of slavery in America or even in other countries. He's not talking about that kind of slavery, but he's talking about us being enslaved to something, us being um, ensnared. I, I like that word better, to be ensnared by something, to be captured by something, to have our thoughts, everything that we do, um, um, captivated by that thing. And he's basically saying, um, if you are ensnared by a certain thing, you will eventually do those things and become that thing. And one of the biggest things that he wants us to understand is that your identity is so important in your sanctification process. You first have to understand that you are free of guilt of sin. It is no longer a part of who you are. And especially the things of sin, that he's saying that um, the sinful things of this world, those sinful desires are no longer a part of who you are. Therefore, you are not enslaved, you are not ensnared to do those things. 
And in fact, contrary to those things, he says, well, now that you, have, you understand your identity in Christ, of who you are in Christ, you are now ensnared to Christ. It, it's, he's basically saying that your desires of your actions are going to eventually start shifting. Remember I talked about how going from point A to B, that's a slow process that's going to happen. Eventually, your desires to do the things of sin is going to change in which you start desiring to do the things of Christ. See, when we start living righteously, when we start obeying Jesus, when we start obeying God, it, it, it changes from becoming a begrudgingly um, process where, ah, oh, like, oh, I remember, oh, I, I can't cheat. Oh, I remember I have to treat people right. Oh, yeah, I have to remember, um, I, I, have to, I have to love my parents. I have to love the people around me. That's such a hard thing. And, and there may be a lot of times where you don't want to do that. But eventually through the process of sanctification, you will come to desire to do those things. You will come to love to do those things. And so this is what Apostle, Apostle Paul is saying. He's, he's basically saying to that question, you're asking the wrong question when you're saying if you can continue to sin or not. Because by the fact that you're asking that question, because we're, because we're saved now, can, we, can I continue to sin? He's basically saying your desires haven't changed yet. The basic, the basic premise of that question means that your desires have not changed yet. And he's saying... When you're sanctified, your desires are going to change to the point where you won't even want to ask that question. That question won't even make sense anymore. And so that's the whole idea of sanctification that Paul is trying to um, explain here. And that's, I think that's an idea that we have to understand for ourselves too. And continuing on is that sanctification is also a slow process. And I know many of you might be... Um, I don't know how many years into your Christianity, your new birth, your new identity, um, as a new man, as a new woman, as a new creation you're in. Um, but I'm sure all of you have experienced some level of sanctification, some level of, of process of becoming like Christ, where um, one day you woke up and your desires just kind of changed. It's just kind of transformed. And I just want to say that um, that process is different for everyone. Some, it'll be very slow. Some it'll be very fast, depending on the even the, even the season that you're in. You might be you might be being sanctified really quickly. Some you might be sanctified really slow. Some new Christians you just became a Christian yesterday. You're being sanctified left and right everywhere. Some of you might have been Christians for many years, ten plus years, and your sanctification process is very slow at that moment. But here's the thing about sanctification. Don't look to others in how fast they're going in Christ. Remember, sanctification is something, it's a grace and it's a gift from God in which He has given us the Holy Spirit to spur us on, to encourage us, to, to start molding and transforming and changing our hearts to desire the things of Christ. And that God has a plan specific for you in your sanctification process. Trust in that. Have faith in God. No matter what you're doing, no matter how hard you're trying, if you don't seem to be changing, just trust in that faith that God is still working and moving in you. Definitely um, mourn about it if, if you don't feel like your process is as fast as possible. But still, even, even in your mourning, trust in God. Have faith in Him that you're being transformed and you're being changed to become like Christ. It is a work of God in us. And we are merely responding to that work that God is doing in us. And our response is through our actions that we do, through how we treat other people, through the things, um, through, through, like I said, through how we treat other people. And sometimes sanctification, it's going to come like a, like a heavy truck, like a wrecking ball. It's going to come and, and completely shatter everything about you. You might have preconceived notions about something that you that you thought were right, that you thought were good. And the Holy Spirit is going to come and be like, Bam! No, you're wrong. Hey, Chin, your, your thought, your ideas of what you thought about that, what you believe that, they're completely wrong. Just throw that out. Just change it. Or sometimes, you know, Holy Spirit God is going to make something happen in the world. Just change your thought process, to change what you believe to change the way that you act. 
And I know we've been talking about this all the time, and, and, and it's important that we continue to talk about it, is especially in light of the social matters that's going on in this world, with how we treat other people, with um, this whole Black Lives Matter movement, um, where people, where um, these oppressed group of people are coming out and saying, look, we have been oppressed, we have not been treated fairly, and yet there are people out there that still believe and think that we have been treating you fairly. That we have been treating you justly and rightly. We have not been oppressing you. But yet there are people coming out and saying, no, you have not. Sometimes it'll take that kind of level of, of exposure, of that level of, of God working in us, of, of doing something in this world to, to really tell the world, especially us Christians, to say that, hey, maybe something that you're doing is not quite right. Maybe something you're doing is not quite right. And so, as we are being sanctified in our character, in the way that we act, in the things that we do, especially in light of today, when it comes to racism, I really want you to think back on your own life, your own past life, and really ask yourself, okay, have I been being like Christ in the way that I've been treating other people? Especially people of different identities, different cultures, different races. You might have been, you might have thought that you were, but maybe not. And I'm not, I'm not here to tell you of what exactly you need to do, but a part of it is that you need to look um, deep inside yourself, your own heart, and ask yourself the question, have I been living like Christ? And pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those things, to reveal the areas of your life where you haven't been being like Christ. And, treating other people. See, that's, that's sanctification happening. Some of you might feel very uncomfortable with these things being exposed in us. Some of you might be very uncomfortable in our sins being exposed to us. Some of you might be very uncomfortable when the Holy Spirit comes and says, hey, what you're doing is not right. What you're doing is sinful. It is very, very uncomfortable and we won't want to admit it, we want to deny it. But if we as Christians truly claim to say that we love God, that we want to become like Christ, then whatever the Holy Spirit prompts us to transform, to change in us, then we should respond in obedience and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit. Please help me understand what areas of my life have I not been being like Christ, so that I can become like Christ. See, sanctification requires that level of humility. It requires that level of acknowledgement of our own sin and that level of acknowledgement of God's goodness to change and transform us to become like Jesus. So I want to end with this. What are you submitting yourself to? What are you ensnared by? Are you ensnared by the things of this world? Or are you ensnared by Jesus Christ? Are you submitting to Him? Are you submitting to the Holy Spirit? and allowing the Holy Spirit to change and mold your life. So that's all that I want to talk about today. Um, I hope that you have a great rest of the evening for this Wednesday and for the rest of the week. And I'll see you guys Sunday.